This is the second in a series of videos produced by the Caribbean and African Health Network addressing the issues surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on our communities. The news is saturated with rolling scenes from the front line, ever more questions about personal protective equipment, coronavirus testing and daily updates on the tragic spiralling death toll. On social media, there's a constant bombardment with ideas of a miracle cure and tips and tricks on how to beat the virus. While we may be tempted, blind acceptance of unfounded claims can be dangerous. They can speed up the spread of the virus and stop us from taking the simple preventative steps that have been outlined time and time again. This video will address common myths around COVID-19 using evidence-based information from the World Health Organization and from Public Health England. SARS-CoV-2 is a new virus, and in December 2019, the first cases of COVID-19 emerged in a place called Wuhan in China. It's a zoonotic disease, and this means that the virus has jumped from infecting animals, likely bats in this case, to humans. In the early days of the pandemic, a lot of the narrative on social media suggested that black people were immune. That was never the case, and COVID-19 can affect anyone, regardless of their ethnic background. More recently, there's also been suggestions that people from our communities present with different symptoms compared to other groups of people. At the moment, that's not known to be true, and the most common symptoms of the disease are a new onset of dry continuous cough and a high temperature. Another claim on social media is that COVID-19 is spread through radio waves or 5G mobile networks. That's not true. And they also don't make you more prone to catching the virus. COVID-19 is spread through droplets that get dispersed into the air when someone infected coughs or sneezes, for example. You then can be infected if you breathe in those particles or you come into contact with something that's been contaminated by them. There is a belief that building our immunity using home remedies like ginger, garlic, honey, drinking black tea first thing in the morning or alkaline fluids like lemon and lime can protect us from the infection. These traditions have been passed on for generations, and as a community, we've grown accustomed to using them. While they are a unique strength of ours and part of our identity, there's currently no scientific evidence to suggest that they provide any benefit in relation to COVID-19. The only ways to acquire immunity from this virus is to be vaccinated against it or to have recovered from it naturally. Furthermore, it may be natural for us to turn first to home remedies when we feel unwell. However, if you develop symptoms of COVID-19, the most important thing is to self-isolate, practice good respiratory etiquette and hand hygiene for seven days. If your condition is worsening though, or you feel like you can't cope at home, contact the NHS online or dial 111 to reach them by telephone. Do not hesitate to call 999 immediately if there's an emergency. It's also worth mentioning here some other myths about the prevention of COVID-19. Regularly rinsing your nose with saline. So while there's some evidence that that practice can help relieve symptoms of the common cold, there's currently no evidence to suggest that it helps with COVID-19. Using white rum to clean your hands. So whilst the use of white rum for this purpose works, it's expensive, and there are easier and cheaper ways to sanitize your hands. Any alcohol-based hand sanitizer above 60% alcohol is recommended for this purpose, as is regularly washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. A good dollop of hand cream in between washes will help prevent cracking. So you will see people walking around from time to time in masks, but currently the recommendation is that the general public do not need to wear them. Things may change as we learn more about the virus, but currently in the UK, masks are important for persons in the front line of healthcare and those who are more likely to come in contact with the virus. Limiting travel to essential purposes, social distancing, good respiratory etiquette and frequent hand washing are essential in limiting the spread of the virus and far more beneficial than wearing a mask alone.
So drinking alcohol doesn't protect you against COVID-19. And while alcohol may be important to some persons during this time in helping them cope, frequent or excessive consumption can increase your risk of developing significant health problems. If you must drink, ensure that you're doing so in moderation. Vaccines against pneumonia do not provide any protection against this coronavirus. This virus is so new and different that it needs its own vaccine, which isn't yet available. There is, however, a lot of ongoing research, both in the UK and abroad, and it's hoped that a vaccine will become available within the next 18 months. A few myths have been circulating about how to kill the coronavirus once you've become infected. Our bodies are extremely good at keeping its inner temperature constant, regardless of what the temperature outside may be. This is a process that we call thermoregulation. Sunlight contains UV rays which have been used in experiments to kill viruses before. However, at this stage, there is no evidence that sunlight is effective against SARS-CoV-2. According to the World Health Organization and Public Health England, there is also no reason to believe that things like turning up the radiator in your house to uncomfortable temperatures can kill the coronavirus. Neither will using a blow dryer in your nostrils or sipping very hot water. Also, antibiotics are not useful to prevent or treat this infection at home. They can only kill bacteria, and as this disease is caused by a virus, they are generally not useful. Furthermore, if used inappropriately, antibiotics can cause more harm than good and contribute towards antibiotic resistance. Again, the most effective way to protect yourself is through limiting travel to essential purposes only, social distancing, good respiratory etiquette, and frequent hand washing. This is a difficult time for everyone, not only because of concern for ourselves, but also for family members and close friends living abroad, who of course we can't now travel to see. It's extremely important that we make an extra effort to keep in contact with the people we love. Yes, this pandemic has created extraordinary challenges, but technology has made it so that keeping in touch is easier now than it's ever been. Doing so can go a long way in helping us cope. The next video in this series will provide you with the information about some of the prevalent health conditions in Caribbean and African communities, why they matter in COVID-19, and what we can do to help us stay healthy throughout this period and beyond. For more information, please visit the nhs.uk or Public Health England websites. Thank you for watching, stay safe and stay home.